Film, movies, cinema. Everyone has a favorite, whether it be funny, <laughs> violent, <laughs> romantic, wasn't over. Still isn't over. Or just strange. Nice. So, if movies appeal to everyone, why does there seem to be an issue with feminism here? Riddle me this, riddle me that. You see, when women won the right to vote back in the 19-teens, during that time, they assumed a very gung-ho feminist attitude. But time marched on and gave way to the Roaring Twenties and the Flappers. And as kids do, the Flappers thought their moms, along with their feminist ideals, were lame. In the 20s, the emergence of the so-called new woman, um, the, who was manifested in popular culture as the flapper, um, was really a situation where that character um, emerged in popular culture um, at the same moment as she emerged in um, as she emerged as a character in public culture so that the um, relationship between popular culture imagery of the flapper and the the new woman in society itself um, were th those were two um, those were really fused and by the 19 early as early as uh, 1920 um, fashions and um, hairstyles are being directly affected by um, by the movies so just the look of the flapper as well as um, the kinds of stories that um, uh, women came to populate in 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 dramas and comedies in the 20s uh, in the years after Griffith um, were absolutely that kind of um, youthful, sexually aware, if not active, character. A character who uh, enjoyed the, enjoyed and was part of the kind of spectacle of, of consumption and a, and a middle class and upper middle class life associated with driving, with liquor, and other kind of diversions that were seen as um, pretty, um, then pretty uh, new for, um, quote, respectable women. And while the previous generation had marvelously muscled their way into the pulling booths, the world of cinema was still primarily a boys club. Given that a woman didn't win an Oscar for Best Director until 2010, that fact has not changed much. As a result, men controlled much of the public image of women, and still do, based on how they portray their female characters. The image portrayal issue manifests most obviously in looks. Check out the Charlie's Angels or the Tomb Raider franchises. They're all very popular films portraying seemingly independent women. But look at the outfits and ask yourself what we're getting out of this. Role models or sex icons? Because this industry has been so male dominated, a lot of old school ideals have been allowed to perpetuate through the writing in cinema and make its way into the big screens, shaping and influencing our culture in a negative way for generations. Another thing that a lot of writers could do for the female character is when they do meet their ideal man, ideal man um, a lot of times that what happens is that they're trying to bring them back into the feminine world and a lot of times it's things like you know this girl didn't want to get married and that makes her um, badass but then when she falls in love she realizes that, oh my god I do want to get married or she doesn't want to have kids and she realizes that with this man she could do it and I think that we need to stop putting women into these like little pegs of what they're on earth for and realize that we should address more of the fact that women do have the power to make more choices for themselves. If ever a case were to be made for the over-sexualization of women in leading roles, it might be worth bringing up the differences in outfits between superheroes. Say, Batman versus, I don't know, Catwoman? Case in point. Culture. Um, I, you know, movies like any popular culture are are always in this this ongoing conversation with with the the mass society that they depict. Um, both feed the other. Um, movies, uh, popular movies, are in the business of making money, so they have to trade on. Um, uh, they have to trade to an extent on a combination of the the. Um, 
the anxieties that people are feeling about their their situation, plus the fantasies that allow them to momentarily, um, the fantasies of control and agency that momentarily allow them to escape that, um, uh, escape those anxieties. But it's not just about the outfits; it's about the attitudes as well. There isn't really one example of bad female leads. Like there isn't one specific character that you can completely pin down. It's a lot more about types of movies and types of characters. There's the strong female boss character that is only humanized in the film when she falls in love with a man. Or there's the female characters who work too much, who become humanized when they fall in love with a man. Or um, really bitchy and catty women who... You're the definition of neurotic! No! The definition of neurotic is a person who suffers from anxiety, obsessive thoughts, compulsive acts, and, and physical ailments without any objective evidence Shut of... Shut up! Yet again, I just told you I'm in love with you, and you're standing here giving me a vocabulary lesson. When they meet the right guy, they suddenly realize that life is about more than what they thought it was, and they are supposed to become not shallow. You're in love with me. Why? Beats the shit out of me. But I am. Women are caught up in this role of just being, of working too much, being too bitchy, being too feminine, and then not allowing themselves to grow out of that and the only thing that lets them move past that is meeting their male counterpart. It's hard to deny that falling in love isn't one of the most popular goals in all of film. And it's this concept that can rob a lot of seemingly independent women of their empowering qualities. Films like uh, a lot of contemporary romantic comedies and many of the Disney films often have um, characters who seem to have agency, who seem to be active, who seem to be independent, female characters, but um, are active and independent only within a circumscribed arena of, um, of romance, of love. I do. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. We're in the same cycle that we were in in the 20s. Movies have been in that cycle ever since they became, you know, such a dominant, uh, popular um, mass media. Um, I think there's always going to be a conversation going on, and there is a conversation going on between movies and and their public. Of course, the emphasis on all of this is to note that there is more to life than falling for men, and it's important to convey that message at a very young age. Yeah. Lately, a lot of the really great films that have come out, um, things like Pixar movies, like Toy Story, Up, Finding Nemo, they aren't about romantic things. They're a lot more about family. They're a lot more about friendship. So I think that there has been a recognized view in what the princesses do, and um, like The Princess and the Frog, one of the most recent Disney films that came out, um, with the princess in it, she realizes that love for her is important, but what makes her realize it is that the man that she wants to be with doesn't want her to be anything but who she wants to be and like wants her to own a restaurant and stuff. So I feel like there is a slow but steady change in who the princesses are and what they represent to female children. This problem, however, spans more than just today's youth, since many of us were raised with these precarious ideals as well. So it seems as if we all need a better example set for us in our movies. There have been a lot of characters recently that have come out in smaller, more independent films that have gotten attention, especially of the Oscars. Um, films like The Kids Aren't Alright, where the two main female leads are a lesbian couple. They both have a lot of flaws and a lot of strengths. Um, and they're not defined by the relationship as lesbians um, because in this film it's not all about being defined by your counterpart. They're defined by their past, their future, the decisions that they're making now. Um, so that's a really good example of strong females. There's also a lot of movies that have been coming out lately that have female heroines where they're trying to make them stronger women. Like even something like The Hunger Games where she still has males that 
she is falling in love with, but she's not as dependent on them for everything. She is finding who she oh, is on her own, and she's a little bit stronger of a character. While we seem to be off to a good start here, it may take a completely different mindset to solve this problem of misrepresentation. I, I guess I'm, you know, just as much interested in characters like um, the female character in um, Jane Campion's The Piano, in, where I don't know as I think of her in the framework of, um, in some kind of social framework of, you know, woman and not woman. I think of her as kind of an individual soul, where in um, uh, gender roles, are not necessarily um, as germane to how I'm thinking about her. One of the things that really interesting films can do with gender is to help us think about people in categories additional to gender. I think overall we need to reassess how women are represented in films in general, um, not see them as weak people, not see them as um, the counterpart to a male character. Um, if they are looking for love, love shouldn't be the solution to something. It should be something that improves their life but doesn't like fix everything. Maybe it's just because I'm growing older. I would like to see um, uh, the, you know, the, the, the unconscious physical norms for women on the screen um, change so that the presence of um, of older women, of heavier women, of taller women, and make this people is um, is 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 no no longer feels like the filmmaker is making some exotic and daring experiment. Um, it's I think the unconscious choices that filmmakers make that shape our attitudes um, even more so than the conscious attitudes they may make about um, you know the the actual story that they're telling on screen. So I, I think very careful, a very thoughtful approach from filmmakers to things like body type would be um, tremendously, a tremendously important starting place. These all seem like large strides to take, but really all it takes is one groundbreaking film to do one of these things really well to get everybody else to take notice. And eventually other writers and directors will follow suit. When you hear about famous filmmakers, I would love it to be like Steven Spielberg, Martin Scorsese, and this sweet woman or something, or this gay man or something. Just, I would just think that someday Hollywood is definitely going to be a much more diverse and understanding place, and it's going to reflect onto American culture because people get so much from the media and they take in so much from movies. So if they just take that step now and if they start recognizing that it is what people want, because I really do believe that it is what the majority of America wants, then it's really going to be a really wonderful place instead of the boys club that it is now. One of the most important things I think that we do in any of our college classrooms when looking at, um, at popular art and popular media is to say, um, here's a film that, that sort of accurately um, reflects the uh, the anxieties and the fantasies currently at work in society. Not so much just what's wrong with the film, but what's wrong with the society that would generate such a film. Um, you know, to go back many years now, you know, is, is Pretty Woman the problem or is Pretty Woman the symptom? I'll admit that many of these movies we've labeled as detrimental are considered classics, but we must also keep in mind that they're a reflection of a past culture, one that called for less progress, less equality, and less opportunity. Keeping that in mind, we shouldn't forget about them, but rather view them as a foundation upon which we grew as a culture and as a people. Otherwise, we'll find ourselves surrounded by creatures like this specimen. Now, but like my ultimate goal in life is to be like a wife and a mom to like and I say this like people think I'm joking but I really want like 10 kids I mean probably more realistically I have like six but I, you know I want a lot of kids and just be able to like cook and clean and you know and look pretty make the house look pretty make your kids look pretty cook you know I love all that stuff like <laughs>